Gabonga, San Bonan Nonke, in South Africa. Jungle Bassas Shilo Guti, Jungle Bissi Moskubega, Siangok Shuba, Nati Sifunda, Jungle Bapella Le Sifo, Siaka Luk Figa, like South Africa, Sifunda, Imteto, Ele, Ama Regulations, as a Loga Shinj, Amane, Sambas of Trekiso. Amanye akimiso namhlanjeke sizokhuluma ngamanye awo as we have said that as the situation evolves the regulations will keep changing as some may be relaxed some may be strengthened and and become more stringent and as it were we have learned a few lessons from the past week of the shutdown. One of the things that we have realized is that Spaza shops were supposed to be open, but for some reason, some were asked to close. So we're just clarifying that all Spaza shops should be opened including now we've included informal food traders so those who are trading in food informally they are also allowed but they must just get a permit from their councillor or from their municipality and they are free to trade the other issue that has been a problem and we would like to really apologize to South Africans who have been affected has been the issue of traveling from one province to the other for funerals. Because even though funerals were not, are not a prohibited gathering if there are 50 people, we had not said anything in the regulations about how people should move to the funerals. But because there was a prohibition of movement between provinces, this then affected people who wanted to move from one province to the other for funerals. And so we have had to amend the regulations and make it clear that relatives of a deceased are allowed to attend. But because of the shutdown and because of COVID, it's not in everyone who just feels like going to a funeral from one province to the other is allowed. Those who are allowed to move between provinces and districts would be close relatives like the spouse or partner of the deceased, the children of the deceased, whether they are biological, adopted, that is step or stepchildren, or also if they are guardian, a person who has their guardian uh, passes away. Uh, the children in law of the deceased, that's uh, daughter and son-in-laws, parents of the deceased, whether they are biological, adopted, or stepchildren, or guardians. Siblings, whether they are biological, adopted, step, or sister of the deceased, grandparents of the deceased or persons closely affiliated with the disease because sometimes people get very close and even closer than biological relatives. So in that case, people are allowed to travel across the boundaries of the provinces. But that does not increase the number of people who should be at the funeral. The number of the people who should be at the funeral is still 50. And there is still uh, no night vigils allowed. Night vigils are prohibited. And as we explained before, it's not to 
punish, it's not to limit, but it's because of the nature of this disease and how it spread. We have seen that this disease spreads very quickly, extensively, um, especially in church services. We've seen it in Korea, now we've seen it in uh, Manga Wung. And funerals are like church services. And night vigils are even worse. People get very close in a small uh, area. So night vigils are still prohibited. Funerals are allowed only 50 who attend the funeral. Now, so we've been receiving many questions, so some I will just try and, and answer here as well. Some have asked us whether the undertakers are included in the 50. The answer is no, because normally undertakers bring the body and the family or whoever takes the body into the service, and they don't normally become part of the service. So they are not uh, included. I, I've also received lots of questions from the rural areas where people dig their own graves in, te in terms of communities dig their own the, the graves. Whether the people who are outside digging the grave during the funeral service are also part of the 50. No, they are not part of the 50 because they are outside. They are just digging the grave. So I thought I should answer those questions. And also, the, the, so that's, that's really about funerals. But how do you cross the boundary without the police stopping you and saying, no, you can't cross? You have to have a permit. And the permit you can get from the magistrate, who is the head of the office, or you can get it from a station commander or the most senior uh, person at the station. And they will then give you a permit which you will show to the police as you cross the boundary and travel because there are lots of roadblocks along the way. Now, as you know, there are lodges, hotels, and guest houses uh, that have been uh, quarantining people or are not allowed to bring in new people because of this. But it is clear that if you are going to a funeral, you can either stay with the relatives, but if you can't stay with the relatives, because sometimes there's no accommodation at the relative, you are allowed to go to a guest house or a lodge or a hotel. And of course, the, 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 the rules apply if they want to screen you, they'll screen you and then uh, allow you in. But if it's a hotel or a lodge that has people who are being quarantined, it may not be possible. But I'm just clarifying that yes, you can stay in a hotel or lodge or guest house depending on the condition of that guest house and lodge if you cannot stay with uh, relatives. And I see that the Minister of Home Affairs is not here, so he's coming. Okay, he'll clarify the questions, but I will just stress that people are allowed, the borders are closed except for goods, essential goods that are going to our neighboring countries but also for medical emergencies across the border. Uh, the Minister of Home Affairs uh, can grant that. But also, as we know, there are South Africans who, when the shutdown started, were outside our borders. And if they need to be repatriated, 
they, and, and permanent residents, they can be repatriated they, to come back into South Africa, but they have to be quarantined when they arrive here for 14 days. But there are also national, foreign nationals who have been living here. And then the shutdown has taken place, but also COVID-19 generally, who want to go back to their countries. And those will also be allowed to be repatriated to their own homes and to their countries. Um, the Minister of Transport, is he here? No? Okay. Uh, on transport, but he will expand when the questions are asked. On transport, uh, clearly there's been a challenge, especially around taxis, because the initial regulations said the taxis must be half full. So that became quite a big challenge from the taxis themselves. And now uh, that has been relaxed to 70% full and with the encouragement of masks, that people must wear masks. But it's now in the regulations for the taxis only it's now 70%. There's also been, <coughs> um, health has also asked that <coughs> there should be amendments brought in because there is a big challenge around tracing contacts. Uh, some of the doctors or people who are supposed to fill in forms when people come to test do not uh, fill the forms properly. They do not put the addresses, the correct ID numbers, the correct uh, information generally. And sometimes they don't put the information except just the name and, and, and telephone number. So they've then asked that these should be done as in the regulations, that they should be the first name, the surname, the ID, or passport number, residential address, or other addresses depending on where the person is located, a cell phone number, and also they've requested that even when that is happening, sometimes people write wrong ID numbers and so on. So maybe there should be a copy or a photo of the, of the ID where it shows the ID number in particular. And this is to make it easy for when somebody tests positive to be able to trace the contacts because when somebody tests positive and they've been in contact with many people, some of them may either have contracted the the COVID-19 or may be in danger of contracting it. So it's important that they are traced. In addition to that, and Minister Stella and Aveni will expand on this, but in addition to that, there is now a regulation that will allow the health department and tracers to say Minister Lamini Zuma, has, if I'm making an example, if she has tested positive or anyone who has tested positive and they want to trace everywhere where you've been, because sometimes even, people, even if you are asked, you may not remember everyone who was around you or who has been around you, or you may not know them. You may have gone to a supermarket and you were in the queue with someone or you were standing next to somebody looking for something. So you may not be hiding the contacts, but you may just not know. If you were in a taxi, you may not know who was in the taxi with you. 
in the bus with you, and so on. So one of the measures that is being taken is that to trace the cell phone numbers of people who are around you. Because if we're, if we're all here and we have our cell phones open and we connect to the same uh, mass, uh, then they can check who was around you. It's not to spy on, any, on anyone. It's just to make sure that you may not know who the people where around you are. One of the gadgets that almost everyone carries with them is a cell phone. Even when people go to whatever, they tend to carry their cell phone. So it's easy to trace through the cell phones wherever this person has been and trace through the cell phones that were around, around that person. So that's one of the things that has been introduced in the regulation. And of course, the other issues have been cargo, because if you remember, the initial regulations were saying essential cargo. But now, at the ports, it's all cargo, because if the essential cargo coming and there's non-essential cargo in front of it, the essential cargo may be delayed if the non-essential cargo is not attended to so that the essential cargo can come through. So that's why now we have relaxed that to say cargo, so that the essential cargo is not held back by non-essential cargo that has not been processed. So those are some of the things uh, that have been uh, relaxed. Downbenjig <laughs> Kupuma banta bane pemishi ni pel. No ma banta bayo tengu uza. No ma banta bayo tengi meet. No ma bayo agato hotel. Manje mauzo suge khauteng. No musuge KZN utu ye Western Cape. Uyo tengu muta uguaz. Kanti mau yo nwaba. Ugenze utu neslogo. Ese duze eslapu. So si atoli sa glaba ba patereka abigle itzu. Koto agesi bese sbon uti gui nkinga. Sase suza muguti, siza muguti umteto siti. Bavu melegi ile manje. Abantu guti baye mwa beni bebe veli bevu melegi ile pati. Beguinki inga begu guti. Bekona lo umteto ota bandu banga cruz. Baye wa mayama profit. So sebe ya vumelega kodwa. Kukona eh, inche lo kufanele bailandele. Umagu isobo sako. No magu umuto shate na e no ma upatna wako ingane no ma u umako tumkwenyana no ma abazali no ma o tatewe na bafowe nu no ma umkulu no koko no ma banta basondele nega kulu na lo umuto shoni lego tamshamba benge wonum denwe gas. E masi tabazali gesi shobonga bazali no manga be ingane yako weza layo no mingane wae adopta no ma step child nge, 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 nge si intu asiki step child kota nge si nkisike kutuwa kune step child na boge no ma msa umbe koni ingane ezala na makate na bandaba abazbegi le kota babe benge bona abazali na abo la po baya fagwa koto age besebe hamba bea enkantolo no me polistesh bayo funa ipemit kulula ge mao peti death certificate uhambe nae uyo funa ipemit ufigu nigezu ipemit yoguti 
umama poi segmi sentileni gui road blog uguazu shula uba kumbi si permiti ako bagi shulis kota logo agu shuti mwabo seizo bamkulu imwabo isazo babantu abaa mashuma masalu fifty aiga shuli lapo fuji umlinde lwepsugo auga funyelo jengo basa skazi luguti umwabo uyafana ne nengonzo yes ondo esboni luguti inkonzo zia guazu uguti zenze lesifo si pepete kega kulu ngo kshesh so ne umwabo uyafana nengonzo higo siti ababe u 50 mshambe makamba iskati Sambe gogo chizu, kuye ngoguti sifo siba ngono, siya kupuku. Masa si ngono, obviously, kupinda kushindu. Koto kwa manje, ama shuma masana, akishulilabu. Umlindelo, au vumele kile. Abandaba tuwa listumbu, ama undertake, haba se mochwari, ababa liwe glu 50. Abandu abamba, ituna. Ababa liwe glu 50. Sitasikaze ngobi mbuzwe mningi. Ebi logu si itola leyo. Maila na nalu 50. Uma kusuga weli nyi indao. Ufigi ikoni indao yuglala la uyakona. Nga lala. Ma ufigi ingeko. Ufumelegi luguti. Uyofuni indao. Noma kse hotela. Noma kse guest house. Noma kuse loji kodwa na kona Zofige bakambi sengenje la ya kona Obezi nyi ndao Chambezi nga kutati ngoba Zitate la bandaba kwa randinu ayo Noma zikutata mchambezi funukale zikuskrine Kodwa ge vumele gile Mkuti mainge kuinda uyuglala Lau ya kona emisi ndao ya kona Uguazu yola la glezu ndao Ngati Iga kuli logo Noguti iga abantu base South Africa Banga pande Abazo tole Sebe valele kile Bazo funyelo wa ubuya Kodwa baya kwarantini wa mabifika Wezo kututa Amategisi Iga kulu Seye kitiwe manje Noguti abe wafu Awabe se awabe mashuma iskombi sa guase ekului ngushkuti umanga bitegi si tata ten ya linganis inga bata tabantu ishu inga bata tabantu ba iskombi kuda kufunga no boge ube kona mamas then besen kaza jelo kui na kuda oza kwe tu bona bazo na baga kuluzo zongelezi. Uguti Jangoba umuntu manga be Nekri wane Tolaga lukutu na alo Nekri wane le COVID-19 Fanile tolaga lukutu Oba na banta sege watinta na nabu Uguze nabu bakokwe Batestwe batalisenda Wene sekeleni Uguti bafigelege Uguti manga be Nekri wane Na boseli ya bapata Sebe kumbisi mpau Batatwe baiswe Labezo sisagala kona batestwe basi za gali manje kutola gali kuti laba okufanele bakwalisi mnini ngwane ya bantu abazo test abakwalisi ngenjele besa kubanzima ukuthi utole kuti lomundu umtole kwa yena lomundu bezo test na ngoba mtambe ikeli lake la ishala kona liko le ID yake ayiko inde ningi je okufanele ngabezo kona aziko So, sekufagwe la mtetuwe ni mbuti. Umundu maizo testo kufanele na ganjani, atatwe kama nesbongo, atatwe inamba ye basi, noma ye passport, mangabune passport, atatwe ikeli, dala pesala kona. Noma guse mzinuwa ke, noma gugubo, noma mzambe agayena wala usale hotela kutwa nilo keli, liafuneka. Besege mbuti, ne namba yake e yo kingo itola gali bese ngobage abanye mtlame kwe skatbat mabe kopisha banga kopisha gali 
Tlambi stombe se ai passport la gune number kona ne stombe se se ID when the we e e e copy no mak itadri stombe. Konge logo when the logo tik vige lo eti nampaga tik lesi fo gut lesi fo singa saga zig si zamu gus kog. Ogo kinage abazo na ba futika kulo zagwejo. Ogo guti. Uguza bantu batu lagali, ngoba bantu abatu lagali. Enye imzamu, yoktu la bantu, abebe setuze gomutu. O setu lagali guti, unalo liliki wani. Ngoba sonke in ingledu, mas hamba, samba na maselfu. Sonke samba na bula buma kale kukwi. Ushuguti, umangimila, gipetu makale kukwi. Ei kampa anuzo kaza uminister lapa zizo kwa zuboni kuti abanya bantu ba be milai tuze kwa mijenga labo minister lava leo makale kukuin ba ukwago uba baso kwa zuboni namba zama cell phone ebe zise tuze leo mfuwe tunga apa baso kwa zuboni kai bise tuze nchame na le alio justice baso zuboni tibise tuze baso zuboni uguze ge ban pepis. Bese beya beya zakni nukuti e ukoni muto bese tu sewe mchamba nazi nukuazi la at least mchamba siyaz mchamba wazi mchamba busa stall uteng mchamba busa pange mchamba kuwe njenda ukodwa unga zwe na unga baz na lavan mchamba se taxi na ubaz lavan tu buki bele na ukodwa ba peto makale kukui ame inkamba ni zokuazi ushuta. Na mbaba tate bepete labu makale kukwe. Engita ngongege, gishuguti, asonge, le shutdown asi observe. Ngoba ipepi satina. Yabo. Mapoisa, uti masenkulu misi zula nkulu manga nge ibaza shop ukinsile nkoshi izbaza shop zonke zivunyelu uti zivule stengisa asiki izbaza shop ezinga vunyelu ukufula bese uti laba abatengisa ayo ugula noma gulazza Abatengiso mama o abatabangane asesbabo ni betengisa o tamati zina ni nana ba itengisa elshiwa nombi la eh futma osi umnandiga eh bonge la ba funye le manju tengisa ko ba ba benga zange ba fa we listin sebe fa gi we manju ko to elwa nje uguti ba tole anti manga bebe yotenga. Fadle ba suge ba ame ba yote na lakteng swa kunyumbi la ba buye ba zo tengis manje na boku funenga ba bene permit waba ma benge na i permit esgata la one zizo ba mis so kufanele ba yego kanzela no magu me ya no magbani ba yote luguti ba benze li permit luguti ba wazi ukhamba ba yo stalka ba tengis inta ba zinga yo ba buye ba zo tengis. Sibonge la kulu mbongoshe Sese za obisa ke unongosho zotifutu kunaba Kulogo kulu mile unongosho ustela ndabene Abrams Sistela wange na hali Oh ok Sibonge la kulu kubala lele makai Thank you, Minister Mtembo and colleagues. Good afternoon. It's evening, actually. We've been locked up. We've even lost trace of time. Uh, to my colleagues that side, to the fellow South Africans that are watching us, I'm just here to expand on what Minister Zamini Zuma spoke about in relation to contact tracing. And I want to say it up front that I know most people have been concerned that we can see now government wants to spy on us. And this is not spying on anyone. Just to provide clarity and context, as we all know that we are 
under a situation whereby we've declared a disaster management state and on top of that we're in a lockdown we are in a lockdown because of a virus that is spreading minute by minute it is in our interest not only as government but also as south africans to make sure that we can minimize the spread of the virus and therefore that means we all have a have a responsibility to look at any environment that can enable us to minimize the spread of the virus and amongst those is that that we refer to as contact tracing and when we say we're going to use cell phone numbers it doesn't mean we take anybody's number let me provide clarity there as the minister explained those that go and test and they are found to be positive as they fill in their information it is them those that have tested positive that the Department of Health will then seek permission from the ECNS licenses to say we have these people that have tested positive. Can you therefore give us access to the geolocation? The reason is done by the Department of Health is because it is them that will be keeping the database of the people who have tested. So I just want to provide that clarity and we do respect the fact that everyone has a right to privacy but in a situation like this our individual rights do not supersede the country's rights. Whereby we're saying the most important and critical right that we're all working towards is ensuring safety for South Africans so that the spread does not continue. As I pause on that, because I know most of you will be jumping on that, the second one uh, that we have looked at also, again, after the gazetting of the regulations, one of the key things that were raised was on the issue of, of, of the entire value chain in the telecommunications sector. We've had questions where people are asking us about data centers. Those that are in the industry and those that take interest in reading the Electronic Communications Act, they will understand that where we mention the electronic communication facilities, data centers, batteries, warehousing, everything that's in the value chain is covered in that but of course we cannot in a situation like this say all retail shops must be open the intention of locking down everyone is to minimize that up and down movement therefore if we open all the retail shops it's going to tell you that we are facing a challenge of opening ourselves up to more infections and in order to reduce this, we then said the operators will have to make sure that they provide an online platform for the people who want to access their services. And the operators themselves are urged to then deliver, which is why you see that the courier services are part of the essential services. We cannot allow people to come to the malls because they want to buy cell phones as much as we understand that they are all critical because people must have access to the information, people must have access in terms of downloading the apps in relation to COVID, but at the center of that is to minimize the number of people that must be coming in and out of the malls. So we urge everyone that will be looking to buy the hardware in terms of the infrastructure that we're talking about to make sure that they go there's 10 trip there's numbers that are, are availed by 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 the operators where you customer service so you just dial the number it's free on your phone you ask for customer service you tell them what you want to buy online if you don't have access to internet those are the issues uh, that we we felt like it's important that we we, we really need to address if i were to go back to the first point that I made was tetang a contact tracing. I want to emphasize this. We're not intercepting calls, even for the person that would have tested positive. As minister so that ngel kasha benga ziboni into baba ne mpau zog baba test test positive si as into ba nansi mini nimi ngani mbaba mbaba uskreno goba sabi skwa zuru kui boina through the geolocation kunga biko bandu ke bandu basekaya and batanda yo abaza uti ukulmente ufuna ukumamela ainando yo gwenza nekor 
ne operators ziaya zibazinga abanjwa ubazizawo intercept ngoba umthetho we interception uyachazwa uba kulandelwa ipi process lena yenzelwa ukulandela intsholongwane okanye abantu abanenntsholongwane nabo bangabe kanti baye basondela kulo mtu unenntsholongwane tizawuma apho minister diabole Sibonga Kolo, who minister was Teranda Bene Abrams, Sia Kubega Gemanje, Sibiza, who minister Wezes in Ru Namanzi, and a sanitation, Guti Azo Kurumanat, Minister Lindy Sisulu, Sia Buleda Minister. Yabonga Minister, a sanitation gets a Zulu in Zanga says. Mine is to indicate to you that uh, we have taken a decision, we've codified it in law. It has been signed on by the Minister of uh, Local Government, who is responsible for the national disaster that we have proclaimed. This is to indicate to you that we have centralized the, the direction of water, the procurement of all those things that provide you with water, and giving indication of where water is available, etc. As you know, we have in this country various boards that are responsible for various responsibilities. Our municipalities are called water boards, which means that they have the right to have water and they take water from uh, bulk supply, which I provide, and they take that bulk supply into your taps. We also have irrigation boards. These are largely people who own farms and have irrigation schemes and these fall under a particular board that directs where the water may go. We also have a number of other areas where we have our water and what we have done now is to take all of that water and put it under the control of one central command which is called the command center. This command center is situated at the Rand Water in Johannesburg and that is where all the directions, where all the commands around where water is concerned will be coming from. At the end of this, I will give you the number, which I keep repeating, of where you will call to be able to get water. This, the, the command center ensures that all the water, water tanks that we have procured are taken to the place that has been identified as in need. The municipalities will be responsible for identifying the places where the water tanks will be placed, but the water tanks will be provided centrally. All water tankers will be reporting on a regular basis to the command center, which is situated in Johannesburg. Should anybody experience a, sh a shortage of water, this is the place where we will be able to direct our tankers to. This is also the place that will direct those people who own irrigation schemes in our farming community to direct some of their water to where there is a need for water. So in short, we are now taking over most of the work that belongs to the boards that we've given rights to look after water. We have centralized it. We will also centralize procurement of all of those areas that we are dealing with. Insofar as water irrigation schemes are concerned and irrigation uh, uh, boards are concerned and associations and catchment areas, they will be directed also by the National Command uh, Center and we shall keep a costing of the quantities of the water that we take from them 
and they will claim for that water from the department and the department will pay for those costs. In short, we are now saying we are centrally controlled. All the water in South Africa will be directed by us to where it is needed most. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Sesulu. Again, continuing to clarify our regulations, continuing to ensure that our people have got all the amenities and services that they need to fight this coronavirus. I now call upon Minister Patel to tell us how we are strengthening our regulations in the trade and industry space. Mr. Patel. Thank you very much, uh, colleague. And um, <coughs> Now that we've had seven days of lockdown, uh, we've strengthened it in uh, the regulations in a few areas. We're still reviewing the regulations. And the, the areas that we can cover today in the briefing relates first to the issue of cargo, which Minister Lamini Zuma covered. Uh, the regulations have been amended to enable all cargo now to come into the country and to be offloaded from, uh, from ships. It applies to essential goods and other goods subject to sanitizing or disinfecting cargo where these are necessary. And it will allow our ports not to be clogged up so that the essential goods can in fact reach uh, South Africans. We've also with the Minister of Transport clarified the procedure for air cargo. Uh, the planes bringing cargo to South Africa would be able to land and the crew will be allowed to disembark. They will then go immediately from there to dedicated hotels that have been indicated uh, in uh, or near the airport. And they will be in lockdown in their rooms until they return back to the uh, planes for the flight back. And the air freight companies have strongly welcomed this uh, clarification and it allows us now to ensure that a freight cargo uh, comes into South Africa. Third, in respect of call centers, the call centers that provide services for international clients, uh, there are a number of them that operate in South Africa, and the regulations clarify that they may provide essential services in respect of healthcare, social services, government services and financial services but it's subject to social distancing rules that will be determined by the ministries of health and of trade industry and competition and we're finalizing those right now uh, given the taxing operating hours supermarkets have been required to adjust their opening hours and most of the large shops now are opening at 7 a.m in the last uh, few days, of course, with the uh, payments to uh, uh, South African SASA beneficiaries, the stores have tried to work hard to ensure that they maintain social distance in the stores and at the same time that they are able to service a number of uh, the customers that have come to buy basic goods. So those uh, constitute the immediate changes that have been made to the regulations and we are now reviewing uh, the areas around exemptions to ensure that the previous regulations are implemented uh, appropriately. There are also actions being taken around the regulations dealing with uh, increases in prices and hundreds of complaints have now been lodged with the Competition Commission and the National Consumer Commission and within 
a very short uh, period of time, we will see the first cases coming up at the tribunals where uh, the two commissions will be laying the evidence that they've gained and they've been able to collect from uh, complaints that the public have raised. This will then be, uh, be presented to the tribunals and we anticipate uh, that decisions will be made quite quickly against companies, firms or individuals that are profiteering in this period. So that covers the key changes to regulations and the implementation of regulations. Thank you. that clarity on what yes, uh, Minister Aaron Solid. Again, we are doing all this in our fight as a nation against this deadly disease, coronavirus. Minister Solid. Thank you very much. Uh, the changes that occurred in home affairs in these regulations are only two indeed because as you know all the borders uh, to the Republic have been closed except for essential goods. Now the changes here is that we will allow fuel cargo and goods during this period of lockdown. In other words, it's no longer just essential uh, essential goods, but we will allow goods, as Minister Damini Zuma has said, and even motivated why that is so. The second change is that you know that the borders have been closed for people, but now the amendment is that the Minister of Home Affairs or a person designated by him or her may allow a person to enter or exit the Republic for emergency medical attention for a life-threatening condition. This one has been there, but the addition is that or for a South African or a foreign national to be repatriated to their country or nationality or permanent residence, meaning the minister or anybody designating uh, who has been designated so by the Minister of Home Affairs may now allow a, a person to be repatriated to their country, meaning South Africans who are in other countries can come through our borders provided they ask for permission, or people from other countries who want to go through the border uh, may now be allowed. Thank uh, you. Gore Baba Bato Hopelo or Vai, Mafilongao, a bit on the quarantine side, Mova Yango to Alola Rona, Majatia Lusumi, Leamani, or Ribon or Avani Bulichi, Gialebo. We now call upon the Minister of Justice and Correctional Services, 
to come and also elaborate what changes are there as they relate to the space that he's operating in. Minister Lamola. Yeah, no, thank you very much, uh, Minister. And to the colleagues and uh, members of the media. I think the first one is to state that uh, I see from uh, social various social media platforms that the government is flip-flopping flip on the regulations from time to time or inconsistent and so forth. I think we must state from the outset that the regulations will be amended, will be reviewed from time to time to, to deal with issues that arise as and when we move on during this period because some of the things that might happen we may not have been aware of and we'll have to strengthen or sometimes relax the regulations and that is what is happening as we speak and hence today there has been further clarifications and amendments to the, to the regulations. One of the unintended consequences was the one of informal traders and spaza shops which uh, you will have seen that uh, in some of the malls and the uh, shopping centers, people have flocked there even to buy bread or to buy tomato, which could have been offered close to where they stay. So as we move on, we have to strengthen and ensure that we make the regulations to be effective. I will only speak on one aspect which relates to, to you will have heard all the ministers from Minister Jamini Zuma to Minister Naveen Abrams, they are relating to the concerns that the public might have about being spied to by the by these regulations and they've all said and assured the nation that this is not spying so government to ensure that this is also safeguarded in terms of the regulation we've provided for the designation of a of a retired judge who will ensure the the privacy of the information who will ensure that the, the information is used only for the purpose of COVID-19 as per the regulation by the Director General of the Department of Health and that there is going to be a weekly report from the Director General of the Department of Health to that designate judge who is going to ensure that the information as it is provided and as how Minister Stelland I mean, Abrams has explained is used specifically as per what the regulations provide the information should be used for and we intend to appoint the designated judge as soon as possible. That is social media. Government is you <laughs> Via eighty more in the Madurupin, Wava Shavashinqua, Niti Nimatamatis. This is Singa Magali, Song of Singa Shavika, Lavangapo, and a social assessor in Lakuku Talangu, eating the winter to mold in the shopping centers. So a social singer in Laku, finally, Chinja now, Lukuveni, Porta Kuvan, Vakoti, Kuveni, Vashava Lavangapo, Nukuveni, Vulaku, Tani, left the minister reading one thing of Hula. And now, we have a contract tracing. It is a case of the appointed a retired judge. We have security from the Mundanga Garda for information linked to the government. It is received by the government for the COVID 19. You can see the problem. Thank you very much, Minister Lamola. Thank you. We, we, we now call upon again in the same vein of 
all of us waging a war against this deadly virus called coronavirus. That's why we are improving these regulations. But we are also a listening government, by the way. Where our people say, can you tweak this regulation so that uh, it is able to still achieve the same objective but not be a menace to our people. We are a listening government. We listen to our people. Having said that, uh, I call upon the Minister of Police, Peggy Taylor. No, thanks, uh, <coughs> to the colleagues. Uh, I also wish that I will come, announce, and sit down. Now the problem, I need to look after everything that they have said that it does happen. So there where my pain comes from. But it's a pain that I don't mind to live with it. Uh, it has been explained, maybe starting with uh, Minister Lamini Zuma, it has been a painful experience for all of us, these uh, funeral matters. We are glad that they are relaxed and explained, uh, especially between provinces has been a main, uh, a main problem, especially with the, between Western Cape and Eastern Cape and the station called Aberdeen. One has been dealing with a lot of problems and Aliwal North has been dealing with a lot of problems. As Minister Kosazana Ramini Zuma explained, 50 hasn't changed. So when people request the permission to move to attend the funeral, they'll have to understand that they might not reach the funeral when the number 50 has been made there. So it's important to understand and keep link uh, how many other people are going are going there. That shall not be allowed that people are more than are more than uh, more than 20, no, more than 50. <laughs> that, 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 that's one. Two, maybe it's important to say, we'll make a call that people, they listen to these new regulations and they stick with them so that we are not forced uh, to enforce the law. Uh, maybe one can say since the 27th, until the 30, uh, until the 31st, or until yeah midnight, uh, 2,289 people have been arrested for breaking these these regulations. We hope that we would not have arrested those people because the laws are not broken, especially uh, alcohol traffic and other offenses against these regulations. It's a call to say, let's all stick with them, let's respect them, so that we don't uh, reach this level where people get uh, arrested. Our forces are still out there. We've got 20, uh, 24,389 of the police, uh, together with the South African National Defense Force, the metros, that's the number that is on circulation as <coughs> as we as we speak uh, at the at the present moment there is just one point i want to make on this one these regulations as assigned by minister jamini zuma are national are national regulations there are no provincial regulations there are no maspala regulations so what is done in Limpombo is expected to be done in Western Cape. So they shouldn't come with theirs. We, you, you hear that uh, some provinces will relax some uh, and differ from other provinces. They shouldn't complain because the police won't implement the provincial so-called regulations. They will stick with the national regulations. So they, they shouldn't make noise when the police pounce. I, I, I understand that there are provinces that are, are beginning to come with their own. Please don't do it. 
provinces stick with stick with what is there signed by the national minister there's nothing wrong if you feel you need a change to make a presentation then those things are discussed there and they are changed there but they cannot be changed piecemeal by the provinces zobalulega kokuthi wonke ama province azi ukuthi izwe lilodwa awekho amazwe ayicokogwana la umthetho usayinwa uminister waka kokta ezwe lonke usebenze izwe lonke kuyezwakala ukuthi kunama province aseqale into zawo ukuthi bona bazoqegisa lo mthetho uhluke kunaloa sifuna ukuqinisekisa ukuthi ayikhinto njengaleyo uhuma utholakala ukuthi amaphoyisa akubona uhlukile kwenye indawo azogcizelela akubophe ungakhali ngoba uwena uzobekwa kwa kumthetho landela owezwe umthetho osayinwa ungqongqoshe oyedwa eh le komkhulu epitoli siyathemba ke siyacela futhi ukuthi niqine kanjalo leyo mthetho yonke ke lomthetho we show namhlanje la esizo ibheka ukuthi yanakekelwa eh iyenziwa sibambisane eh ukuthi ningasiniki ithuba samaphosa siyathanda ukuthi singanikwa ithuba lokunibopha kodwa manje sinika ithuba lokunibopha nathi ngeke siliyeke eh ithuba lokuthi makukhona emthethweni eyiphulayo asinayo inkinga yokunganibophi asinayo futhi yokubopha uma ukuthi ndale ukuthi kufanele ukuthi eh sibophe abantu ababoshiwe njengamanje bahengulungwane ezimbili namashumi amabili nesishaka no no namashumi amabili namashumi bayengulungwane ezimbili namakhulu amabili namashumi asishaka lombili nantathu so ileyo ke namba esithemba ukuthi ayizoqhubeka leyo namba izo 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 izokwehla noma izono eh sikhulumeke ikakhulu thina bomthetho ukuthi siyabonga ukuthi icacisiwe le amasiphaza shop sibonga kakhulu eh amasiphaza shop ukuthi ayasebenza wonke eh amaphoyisa azokukhumbula lokho seyithumela eh ngqongqoshe lami nzuma lomthetho ukhomisha sesikhulumeni ukuthi sizithumele emaphoyiseni ikwazi ukuthi akwazi ukuyibona ayifunde asebenze ngayo ngicizelele esicelweni ngicizelele esicelweni osicelile ukuthi uma beyocela ukhamba belandela imncwabo baphatha into zakhona eh njenge njengencwadi isitifikedi eh saba so ukhombisa ukuthi ubani ushonile nale incwadi efungelwe ethiwa yi affidavit emhlambe bakunenkinga uma becela esiteshini bacela esikhulwini esikhona bacela kuma siteshi noma ubani obambela uma siteshi ngaleso sikhathi bangafici nje noma yiliphi boys elincane balifica bese becela kulona ayizuvumeleka leyo kufanele noma be ngantoni bacele emanjini noma bacele noma ubani othunyelwe imanji ukuthi bakwenze kwenzele ukuthi zikwazi lezo incwadi okunye singacela ukuthi mhlambe bacizelele ukuthi bacaba ngokuthi bazobuya nini kwenzele ukuthi amaphoyisa abadedele ngalelo langa ebuya kube izinto zonke lezo abayicelayo eh okuwa manje siyabonga kakhulu ukuthi eh sisabamsele eh kodwa ekubamsele enkwethu zofanele ukuthi umthetho eh siwugcine siyamemeza siyacela ukuthi sibamsane siwugcine umthetho ngoba nathi sisebenza ukuvikela uma kodwa ugcinekile asizuba nayo inkinga siyabonga kakhulu sibonge nathi kakhulu kuwo wonke amalunga we cabinet ese wakhulumile lana eh sigqizelele futhi ukuthi konke lokho sikwenza ngoba sisempini sonke simane basenizimu Afrika ukulwisana nale gqiwane elila ekhaya i coronavirus eh sesa uthatha ke imibuzo njengoba sishilwa ukuthi na le press conference lena i press conference ehuhlobo esingakaze sibe nalo 
lapho onke ama journalist abathathi indaba bengekho la bazosifonela so sezaba baqela ke manje ukuthi kena owoqala ke ofuna ukubuza umbuzo akaqale ke manje asive ukona oqala ofuna ukubuza umbuzo Ubongani uvela kuyi pi i newspaper o i radio Oh eyewitness thank you very much you can continue Ubongani ask your question Thank you very much. Next, next caller. Call center. Mubani also owes the next caller. Uh, thank you, Ashik. Can you go ahead and ask your question? You are saying you're from which uh, news uh, paper or radio? Oh, okay. Thank you very much. You can go ahead and ask your question. Thank, thank, thank you very much. The the next caller, so we have these two now. Okay, for now we have these two. We will get others. Uh, who's going to respond to the first caller? Oh, on, on our WhatsApp system again, we do have some callers. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Minister. Um, we actually have a, a lot of questions from WhatsApp. The first question is from Yan Yan from Pretoria News, and his question is directed to the Minister of Cocktail and DTI, and is asking whether the sale of cigarettes is now allowed, as claimed by the Western Cape Provincial Government. The second question is from Jolene van Veek from Media24, also directed to the Minister of Cocktail and DTI. Um, and she says that in the regulations gazetted today, there is no specific mention of the transport of essential goods across provinces. Can So she's asking, can essential goods be moved between provinces, metros and districts, although it's not stipulated in the regulations? Um, so Fumukwena asked the question directed to the Minister of Transport, who's not here. I don't know if I should continue asking that question. Okay, she's asking um, that she's stating that the Minister of Health announced that they will ask China and Cuba to help. Um, do we have any reaction from those two countries? And how is South Africa monitoring the airspace after a chartered plane landed at Owar Tambo International Airport from Zimbabwe without authorization? Um, then there's a question from Tabo from ETV News, also directed to the Minister of Cocta. Are guest houses and lodges not on lockdown during this period? Um, then there's That's another your last one. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Um, then there is another question, the fifth one from Matthew from Times Live, who's asking the Minister of Cocta, um, have there been any discussions around the possibility of extending the lockdown beyond 21 days? If this were to happen, what is the process that needs to be followed in that regard? Thank you very much. We will come back to you uh, because I see that you have got many WhatsApp questions there from journalists throughout the country. Uh, who will start, colleagues? Uh, 
Minister Lamina Zuma, you understand? <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, the question about whether I'm not worried about uh, relaxing the rules for people who are going to the funeral, funerals, and whether we won't clash with Minister of Health. Normally, we these. Uh, regulations are looked at collectively. Uh, they are not m m personal regulations. I sign them because they are under a law that is administered by the Minister of Cocta, the Disaster Management Act. But they are not mine per se. So we are worried. But you remember that the lockdown came and people, it came just before a weekend and people needed to go and bury their relatives. It's still a, a, a norm in South Africa that close relatives go to a funeral. Maybe with time that will uh, diminish, but for now it is. But as we say, depending on how this evolves, that may also change. So nothing is cast in stone because the epidemic and the pandemic that the, the world is facing is not static. So nothing will be static. Things will move. If we need to restrict again, we will. If we need to relax, we will. So, but it's collective. Uh, Somebody asked how would somebody move from Jobek to somewhere uh, if for a one day funeral, a uh, same day funeral. The government does not determine how you get to a funeral at all. It's not our responsibility to determine that. How do you get from point A to point B? What we were doing with these regulations is just to allow people who want to move from point A to point B to do so. But it's not our responsibility to say, you will move with this by that. No, that's a personal responsibility for the person who wants to move how they move. Um, transporting goods Goods have been always allowed, especially essential goods, to travel across provinces. Truck drivers, even in the first regulations, were allowed to travel across provinces because a lot of goods come from either the farms or the ports and, and they have to be then transported to their destination, even within the country, but also across the borders. So those goods were Truck drivers have always been allowed, but it's us who are not allowed because we are supposed to be locked down, sitting at home, except those who are performing essential services. Um, guest houses, yes, they are, but you remember that some guest houses are actually having people in them some will have people who will be quarantined in them. So this is a special dispensation for someone who may be attending a funeral if there is a guest house that is available there. And that's why I say it will depend if it's available, they will screen, they may refuse you. So it's up to the guest house according to its own situation. But yes, uh, because people are supposed to be locked down, not moving from place to place, there is no need for guest house, houses to be open. But some are there, they are quarantining other people. Some had people during the lockdown, so those people are locked down there. Extending the lockdown, it, it's still too early to allow, to, to say whether it would be extended or not. We've only had 
a week today. Seven days. Seven days. Even that seven days, if you look at it properly, this week has been the grant payments. So there's been a lot of movement, people going to receive their grants. So it's too early to assess. We will make proper assessment of what has happened. There's research being done, and at the right time, we, the government will make that assessment and then make a determination whether it's extended or not. So for now, it's too early. We don't have all the facts. Thank you. Thank you very and, much. And maybe, let me just say, uh, goods that are not in the regulations for now are not in the regulations as essential goods. As you know, at the first, at first, we, some of the goods were left out, like baby things, they were added. If they are not there, it means they are not allowed. Until they are in the regulations, they are not allowed. So whatever the goods are that are not in the regulation, for now, it means they are not allowed. Um, Minister Sesuru, any? No response, thank you. No question for you, no question for what? Uh, Minister Lamola, in fact, come this side because it's difficult for, for those colleagues. Are you, can you catch him? You can't. Come this side, well. It's a very short uh, answer, so I thought I could read from there. Uh, I could hear from the journalist to ask about the movement of goods, saying that because it is not in this regulation, therefore it is not catered for. Yeah, I will only answer this one, which I've heard from the journalist who was saying that uh, because it is not in these regulations, therefore it is not uh, catered for. These regulations must be read with the ones that were published earlier because this is just an amendment. So there are, there's still a lot of information in the regulations that we've published, uh, I think it's last week. Here, yeah, if it is not specifically mentioned as being amended, it is means it is not amended by this regulation. So that's why when you read them, you'll see substitute 11B with this and that. It is substituting from those uh, regulations. I know it might be a bit confusing, but uh, that is, uh, it is it, 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 the fact is that as you go through it, uh, it is it is still in the main. The main regulation is the one that we published uh, last week. This is just to clarify, to amend, and to strengthen, as I've said uh, uh, earlier on. Ngasho guti, logu ogula, ogu changea logu su publish engeli vigeli lolile. Namsha njente senza nje siya siya eda spindes trizelele uguti logu o bati siya tribiel. Yeah, so la in log sequenda agogula ma regulation wa manje. I would see la was wa publish eh gule vigle ni lulile se su se su kipi godva logo singa gaku mention gula usho guti agu amenwanga usa se njongo wa begun jalo gule vigle ni lulile niabo. Ministers, anyone who wants to respond to anything, nothing. Okay, thank you very much. It's you. Oh, Bob, bad. No good no more to the boot. I'm going to have a masquerade. Good at I say, Western Cape. Maybe let me specific this time to say there is no province that has got a special dispensation out of the regulations that have been signed by the national minister. He, she has just explained that <clears throat> if those things don't appear, which means they're not there. So we'll urge the business in Western Cape not to listen people that tell them wrong things. If it is not on the national regulations, it is not allowed to happen. So the South African police 
who are custodians of the laws and the national laws will have to enforce the national law. If that is discussed as some people have raised it, let it be discussed and we find answer out of it. But for now, cigarettes are not sold. Cigarettes, it doesn't matter where you are. I want, just want to make that point. That, that, that includes, that includes Western Cape. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Minister. Again, let's take uh, those who are calling in for questions. Again, no preamble, just get to the question. Who's, do we have a caller? Hello, sir. The platform is yours. You can pose your question. Hello? Hello? Oh, sorry. I thought it was a gentleman. You had to say lady. My apologies. Continue. Okay, Maybe let, let me repeat your question. You are saying we are allowing people to come from wherever they are into the country. Is that what you are saying? Okay, fine. We we hear you now. Next caller. Okay, Marisa, you you have the platform. Just a minute, just a minute, Marissa. C can you move your mouth away from the mic? We, we can't hear you. We have not heard a single word you have said. If you can social distance yourself from the mic, that will be helpful to all of us so that we are able to hear you. Start again with the first question. We can hear you, but still you can do a, lo a little bit of social distancing again, but we can hear you. Okay, so if a person doesn't have the birth certificate, uh, how will then that person be able to get to the funeral? That is your question, because the, birth certif the, the death certificate has been delayed. But how do you have a funeral when there is no death certificate? Uh, 
Okay, thank, thank you. We will try to answer your question, but I ask you another question, but I leave it to my colleagues. There, there is a third question. Who's the third column? Hello, John. John, we are listening to you. Thank you. Uh, no, no, never, okay. Do we have a few questions from yourself, the WhatsApp group? Yes, yes, I do, Minister. I have a few. Um, Tabo from ETV News is asking the Minister of Cocta, is there no foreseeable danger in government trying to satisfy all the citizens by relaxing some of the restrictions on the lockdown? The next question is from Lee Zega from News24, directed to the Minister of Police. And the question is, um, there, are some poli there, there has been some police visibility in townships, but we have not seen police presence in suburbs, in major roads in Johannesburg, and even on the highways, there is no police presence. Um, but because it's business as usual, is this because you have seen people in suburbs adhering adherence to the rules, or is, there, is this because of a lack of capacity? Um, Genevieve Quintel from Business Day is asking the Minister of Cocta, which is related to the first question, we are seeing more and more regulations being relaxed. Does this not defeat the objective of the lockdown? Um, and yeah, that's basically the question. Then there's a question is again from Liz Eka, directed to the Minister of Police. She's asking, um, to the minister you have always known for you have always been known for your tough talk which most motivates police into action do you not feel that this heavy-handed speak is the reason why we have seen assaults in communities is there any message you would like to send to the police who are heavy-handed in their approach during this lockdown my last question or my second last question is from i can't pronounce the name from brazil uh, to the director to the minister of police um, he's asking how many people that were arrested during the lock uh, were arrested for breaking the lock the lockdown rules in the whole country and uh, how to report someone who is creating or spreading fake news about coronavirus the last question is from the min from lizega to the minister of police um, just let's let's hold it lizega has now asked two questions. We will see Liz Ega later. Okay. Uh, colleagues, let, let's then start. Who wants to start? Uh, Minister Laminezo. Uh, thank you. Let me just say that um, Home Affairs is open for three issues. One of them is issuing death certificates. And you can't even begin to arrange for a funeral if you don't have a death certificate. So that's the first thing you have to get, death certificate, so that you can make all the arrangements. Obviously, if somebody has died in Devon and the child is in Gauteng, they will send them a copy of the death certificate because as soon as they are able to start arranging the funerals, it means they have the death certificate. But if there is a problem, Home Affairs Minister is here, he will make sure that death certificates are issued timers, timeously. So that would be my answer. Yes, um, I, th I think 
citizens are right that we, we shouldn't try to satisfy every citizen. Uh, you are right, and we are definitely not going to try and satisfy every citizen. A and we are not going to be relaxing every day the, the regulations. But this was just an issue because people had not been primed that they cannot bury their fathers or their siblings or their, pe the, their spouses. So it was a difficult call because ordinarily those people would bury their loved ones. And we have not taken it to cousins and to all those. We just kept it at father, mother, sibling, spouse, and so that we keep it very close. There may come a time where it will not be possible. Uh, but for now, that was, I mean, we were getting calls of people crying on the road, um, saying, my father passed away, I'm on my way there, I'm being stopped. So it was, it was really, because as we implement all this, we must also be humane. There may come a time where we can, we, we may have to even restrict it more, but it was just difficult to just say no, cry and go back. Um, but generally, we are not trying to satisfy every citizen because it, indeed, you are right, it will undermine the very purpose of the shutdown, but beyond the shutdown also. Because as, as long as COVID-19 is raging in our country, we'll have to take certain measures and we'll have to make certain restrictions. Uh, the question of food and uh, poor people is really something that government is very seized with. Because as you correctly say, food determines how strong your immune system is besides age and other things. So it's very important that everyone has food. And that's the very reason why in South Africa, even though we, we are not a rich country, we still give people grants, we give child grants, we give all those so that nobody goes hungry. But where necessary, government also gives food parcels. Social development deals with that a lot. And sometimes municipalities deal with that a lot. So yes, but would also appeal to people who have the means to donate, uh, business people who, who have the means to donate. Even retail shops, big shops, maybe they could donate food so that it can be distributed to those who are poor so that they can eat well and strengthen their bodies and their immune system. I think that's what I needed to um, respond to. Oh, and then the, I don't know whether I should respond to questions that are coming now on my cell phone. Okay, let's leave those for now. Okay. Let's deal with those that we have had. Okay. Uh, Minister Ndosi. No, thanks. The, is it incapacity or they are just running on the townships or they're on the highways or they're not on highways? The first day, the main complaint main complaint on the first day is that we send the police in Sentin rather than Alex. That was the first complaint of this uh, of this lockdown. Uh, because of the long queues in, in, in Alex, 
we had to get police from Sentin. Uh, Sentin, uh, yes, Sentin. From Sentin to Alex. So that, that question was killed on the first day that we only sent the police to the, to the uh, African areas or township only. The, well, if she is in Gauteng, she's doing a very good thing for not seeing the police on the road, which means she's staying in. Uh, she must keep it that way. When you go, when you take N1 uh, to, to Limpompo, we have a permanent roadblock at Carousel before you enter Limpompo. When you go south, uh, I can't remember exactly, but uh, as a debate, there is a permanent roadblock. Where you go, that is N3. When you take N12, we have a permanent 27, 24-7. Uh, when you go to Mpumalanga, both on, N, both on N4 and N12. N4, if you go north, uh, northwest, we've got a permanent just before you cross the border, inside, uh, inside uh, Northwest and inside Houting. They are only they are forever doubled those. So it, it to me it tells me a good story that he stays in. She must just continue that way. That's why she doesn't see this. But they are permanently there, uh, those those roadblocks. Uh, in, in most of the time in both suburbs and and townships we don't have roadblocks. We have patrols in those areas. Uh, that's why we have arrested people in both uh, what you would know as a, uh, as a traditionally white uh, suburbs. Hence, we have arrested quite several people in Montclair, uh, in Deben and Westville. We have arrested quite several people uh, in, in, in Alex, we have in Soweto and in Kailisha, uh, where, where we patrol and we find people doing the wrong thing, we arrest inside to those areas mostly we patrol the second uh, police heavy-handed we have tried to explain this question it, I am briefed all the time by the the IP on the matters of the police under under lockdown I will, I will request that people that write about these things, they also check their facts or they wait until the actual facts come. Uh, the, because the main was a murder at uh, Egru Lane. Egru Lane, the private security company has been arrested and there is no police that has been arrested. The further investigation is on the municipality police, of whom I agree is a member of the South African police. So we're waiting for we're waiting for the final, which will come tomorrow, of a of a, a postmortem. Police have been accused of killing somebody uh, in Western Cape. They say it's a beer case. I don't know what was happening with beer. That one, the uh, the postmortem has come out and the postmortem he said was killed by the double attack of a heart attack it's not by the police the third one we're waiting for the here in Houting we're waiting for uh, again the the postmortem the postmortem and uh, he was found dead he was arrested the allegation that was assaulted by the police there were two in the cell he was found dead are waiting for the, uh, the, the post-mortem and further investigation. The, there's one case that I want to make here of one police that uh, has been charged for, for, for rape. So th th this, this man has been charged for rape, he's a policeman. But what is not said by the media and everybody is that he is a husband of the wife that was raped. So now it looks like he's a police that has got nothing uh, to do, just went to rape. He's a husband, he's arrested, we are glad. But it should have been said also that not just a police, but he's also a husband. Because 
I have not heard before husband explain that is a pilot husband, is a doctor husband, is a taxi driver husband. It's usually we arrest a husband for rape. It has been said, I, I want to make that point, that is not just a police that went to the cell or went to the house and raped somebody. It's a husband that raped the wife and the wife opened the case and we have arrested that, 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 that wife. So initially we had a, a lot of problem of reports. First, first days of, first three days of, of lockdown, we received 26 26 complaints of the police, but since then we have received 12 of the police of health, which means they are stabilizing, we're going down, and we are responding to those police. People that break the law, yes, will arrest them. But want to make a call uh, to the to the communities out there themselves to respect the police, to respect the law. As I have said before, that we would not love not to arrest anybody, but if we are forced. We will within the law of police, but also South Africans must learn to, 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 to respect the law. The last one, how many people are arrested? I did give the figure. The figure is 2,289. This figure ends on 30th midnight from the 27th. Western Cape is 774. Free State is 368. Northern Cape is 290. KZN is 225. JP is 217, Eastern Cape is 184, Northwest, that when when this was given, there were 81, but Northwest updated one is 225, Pumalanga is 81, and the Bombo is 67. Those are the figures of the arrest under the lockdown. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Minister Yasmin Zandabin, I promise. Thank you, thank you, Minister. There was a question on fake news. Um, th th there's been an email address that has been created, uh, which reads as follows, fake news alert at dtps.gov.za. Yeah, yeah, it was fine. Yeah. So it's that email address, and then the number on WhatsApp, which is 67 what we have done, we've engaged with the platform owners, uh, your Google, your Facebook, and Twitter, to say as we establish these platforms immediately when the people send the, 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 the complaints, and then we forward it to them, and then they take it down uh, within 24 hours, the latest. That's the agreement that has been reached with the platform owners. And we do urge everyone to report fake news. And all those that are spreading fake news, they must know they're not doing good and justice to the people of our country because they're causing panic. Therefore, we, we request everybody to cease from doing such. We need South Africa to be a normal country, but if we behave abnormally, we're not going to be able to do that. And we don't want Dossi coming in. Thank you so much. Uh, Minister Mzoledi. Thank you. I think the question was about, presumably about thousands of South Africans who are stuck at the borders. As we said, the borders remain closed for normal human movement. But what the amendment today is saying, which also appeared in the previous amendment, is that it's difficult to stop a person constitutionally from coming back to their home. We can't say South Africans mustn't come back to their home. But we are putting the regulations to control the conditions under which they'll come through the borders to come to their home. That's why it says the cabinet member responsible for home affairs or a person designated by him or her may allow the person, which means there must be an arrangement here to allow the person to enter or exit so that uh, we look at its its case according to its own merit and also to make arrangement that such people must be subject subject themselves to quarantine that's why we would like to make this arrangement so it's not just an opening of the borders that people can just come 
moving in and out. It has to be a special arrangement. Thank you. Well, I, I don't know whether there was this question of testing and screening at the border. But I think the question is answered that anybody who comes in still gets to be subjected because you are a South African, we have closed the borders. So anyone who comes in, first of all, must contact, must have permission to come in, first of all. And secondly, such a person will be subjected to our quarantine laws. Uh, as you come in, anybody who comes in gets quarantined. Now, having said that, uh, I saw a hand there that, that we are now doing the last round and also Mam Kosazan, you will also answer those questions that came to you. How many are they? So is Pendulil. Okay. So that, that is the last round uh, so that we are able to go and do these things that we said we are going to do. Can we start with you, madam? I don't know how you came in, but since you are here, we will take you. I, I've made arrangements. Um, hi, my name is Isabel. I'm from Network 24 and also the Belt newspaper. Um, I have a few questions regarding um, domestic violence and how many arrests have been made and how that situation is managed because a lot of people are now crammed inside so that's a problem um, and then the other question that I have um, is the one about uh, children of divorce will that be one of the regulations that maybe will be tweaked later on that people will be allowed to see their children um, and yeah that's that's my questions thank you thank you uh, le le let's take the three this is the last round colleagues uh, we'll take the three then we'll take your two and uh, now let's take the three first uh, who's the first caller some girl ted kulumaba Thank you. The next. Nazir? Have we lost that call? The next one. We can hear you. Who are you? Oh, oh, okay, Nazir. We thought we had lost you. Okay, you can ask your question.
Fine, thank you very much. Let's take the last one from our system. Spirit of a current away. Uh, can you move away from the mic, please, so that Ungai Tabos Ube Guteng and Anjegui Nati Gaza Mel? Basically, your question is, should we have looked, well, we have not looked at other modes of transport either than taxis. Is that your question? Why did we not look at other modes of transport? That's your question. No, no, I'm asking, is that the question? Thank you. Uh, we will take that. Those are your last ones now, uh, Sis Nanga. How many do you have there? Only two, Minister. Two? Yes. Good. <laughs> um, um, the one is from Olim Gambi from ENCA to the Minister of Cocta. Um, he is asking that the 70% uh, tax. Can I continue? Go back. The 70% taxi load comes with drivers handing masks to face masks to passengers, and they now there's a now there's a reported worldwide so shortage of protective gear. How will government meet this demand as it relates to taxis? And there was a question from Bongan Vilani from EWN, directed to the Minister of Human Settlements. Um, how will you monitor how municipality uh, municipalities? Uh, stick to the rules now that water is now that water is the country oh I don't understand I think there was a problem here to the state and now that water has been centralized it's not written properly okay now that water in the country belongs to the state and is distributed equally and fairly um, and our communities which you were identified which you have identified and and are there communities which you have identified that will be prioritized? There's also someone who asked the minister to read the number that the, the central control number that she had alluded to during her speech. Thank you very much. Those were the last ones. We have taken three rounds of questions. I think we have done what we could. We are going to continue to improve our system. At the moment, our system is not that audible. Uh, we will try to improve it, but it works. What matters is that it works. Uh, it assists us to adhere to physical distancing. So we, we are quite proud that we are able to do this. My colleagues, who wants to start? Uh, Minister Sisolo. This is not an answer. It's a question that came through for Minister Nkusazana Lamini Zuma. Her cousin has got six children. And each one of them has uh, nine children. And when they are in a family, they are more than 100. So, and, they, and she wants to know what she's going to do with that number as it, is, it exceeds the number that is uh, prescribed. Pardon? 
Six causes and yes, ma'am. There is a question that says that uh, doctors encourage people with diabetes to exercise, and can we allow them to run? Yes, they can run around the house. Or in the house. Or inside the house. Over. So yes, please, by all means, exercise. We're not uh, saying you shouldn't exercise. The other question was about, um, what, are there going to be regulations on how to handle uh, the remains of people who have passed away because of COVID-19. The, the answer is yes, the minister tomorrow or so will be announcing those guidelines of how to handle, when to bury, how to do everything around a person who has passed away because of COVID-19. That is coming tomorrow from the Minister of Health. Thank you. Uh, minister Sisulu, there was a question on what? There, was, there, were, there were two questions. One was, uh, have we found a way to regulate how food parcels may be distributed in informal settlements? Uh, we're hoping to come back again uh, at the second round of the discussions that we're having now, because for us it is work in progress. And we have been discussing this matter with the Minister of Social Development. But of course, there are other ways in which food may be uh, provided for. Um, then the second question is, what was the second question, by the way? The number, you must repeat the no, number. The, 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 the number. Before the, before the number, there was how we were going to. So, since you are now, the government is responsible for water, how are you going to distribute evenly and equitably? OK. I'm paraphrasing. Thank you. The command center has got uh, ac video access to all our water boards. We're going to increase this to include all our uh, all the boards that uh, are responsible for water. So we are able to see where we have uh, enough water for the residents of that particular area. We're able to see where we have uh, excess water, and we're able, therefore, to request those that have access, excess water to provide those that do not have. For instance, we have several drought areas in South Africa, uh, and uh, we would want to make sure that they have access to as much water as we have in Gauteng or any other place. So we have the systems in place in the command center, and uh, we have invited journalists to come and see. They will be able to see how we do this uh, the level of uh, the level of uh, sophistication of the equipment there makes it possible for us to measure how much water we have and where that water is most needed and we are able to direct that water to where it is most needed. The last question was about the number that I repeat every time I'm with the media of the toll-free number which will direct you. Uh, it acts as a um, reception center and it will direct you to where you might get uh, very direct answers or it will be responded to in full. It is 0800 200 200 0800 200 200 and please be patient when you call we are flooded with with calls and sometimes we're not able to cope. Thank you. Thank you. And us. Can I just add on the question of food? Oh, okay, ma'am. The councillors, community health workers who are on the ground are the best because in the, in the war rooms, uh, for instance, they would know who are the child, child-headed households where there is no income at all, where there is a, a granny with many grandchildren and so on. So I think people on the ground, it might be difficult. I think the ministers will give guidelines, but it might be difficult 
to direct where food should go from national. I think the best place people are the ones on the ground. Um, the, the other question that we didn't really answer was about children whose parents are divorced. I was at another press conference where Minister Zulu answered this question and she, she did say that they are discussing with parents and parents uh, are saying where, when there is a problem and they are helping them. So I think Minister Zulu did answer but they are in touch with those parents or those parents can get in touch with social workers if there is a problem that maybe they can't wait until the shutdown. So I, th I think that matter, according to Minister Zulu, is taken care of uh, in that there are discussions, there are counseling, there is help that is given because it's only a 21 shutdown for now. Thanks. Six times three times nine. Umengane zio zako zo six zale zo nine. No 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 one to make point. Uguti. Guzo balule uguti umdeni ubo nuguti guyaba nemabeni. Ngoma mabe figa benga pezu wa fifty la ba ya kwa naba zovumele. So no manga be i right no manga be right le nambe nigiyo. Don't go beyond 50. Just imagine when you have driven all the way from Guyane to Kokstad and then you don't see the funeral when you're in Kokstad because you are number 51. So it's important that the families, they deal with this number. The, the, fam the question attached to the uh, child one is a, a GPV violence. It's serious. No doubt about it. Uh, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, the last number we received <coughs> from the from the report of the Nash Jones is that since it started, 87,000 people have phoned uh, reporting that there might be a gender violence in the houses. So. I wouldn't know how many that have been arrested, but I know that the police that raped the wife has been arrested, uh, as a, not as a police, as a criminal. But maybe one thing that one can raise here, there is, a, there is news that made waves of a 74-old in Marisbeck, uh, Gogo, that was uh, that was raided and attacked by people that they say there were South African National Defense Force members who were coming to sanitize, and that was Ukokuzuma. And uh, two people have been arrested, one 27-year-old and one 22-year-old were chasing for the third one. But that arrest has been made uh, in Peter Marisbeck. So we thank the police for, for, for quick action and quick reaction uh, on that matter. But as we all agree, that's why, as a South African police ourselves, we have given a number that it can be reported, uh, 0800-150-150, uh, where people, they are abused, and they, so that uh, <coughs> the special unit, that is FCS, has been jacked up. We have tried to push them at different police stations so that they can act and react quicker when it comes to this. Is one area that we are taking it very serious the gender based violence. Uh, some girl uh, some girl had a good time to count these people. He said they were two hundred and fifty. Uh, he spent some time before he could shop. Two uh, two fifty but he, he should have he, I think he did count. The <coughs> that that is out of order somewhere. At the present moment the number we have is 50. And 
I want to tell you many, many shops, they, they adhere to this number. Uh, I went to Guamashu uh, on the first day of, of, of the pensions. There was, a, I think, a longest queue I have seen in Guamashu. But the shop was taking in only 10 people. And then until they were agreed with the owner that he will reduce the staff and bring more people, 20. So they did, we went to Inanda, they, they adhered to the number. We went to, we went to uh, Mafeking, they did not adhere to the number. They brought in 100. We went to Rustenberg, they adhered to the number. So far, we have found more people sticking to this number. It's a matter that we are discussing because there is a formula that the Minister of Trade and Industry is coming with. We said that should not be followed until it's discussed, agreed, and put on the, on, on the regulation if it has been agreed upon. But people cannot begin to use the formulas that have not been agreed upon. So those people that are breaking the law and uh, they must be treated as such. There are other things that they do. Uh, some of these shops have raised it with the minister again. They sell things like uh, the cleaners of the pool and all those kind of things. I don't think those things are essential uh, to if you buy stuff to clean the pool and all. If those people that are found, they have to be punished accordingly because they are breaking the rules. That there were no that there were no mask and gloves. Uh, well, I don't know. But up to this point. We encourage people to do these things, but there is a lot of debate about this, uh, this mask and uh, and the and the the, the gloves. Yeah, no, the, no, no debate about sanitizer, sanitizer. Absolutely no. But this goes to the the complaint, and workers they do complain about that they are not given this, and if the workers feel that they must get these things, they must get these things. And the, and the, the management of those particular shops are responsible for that. They have complained in one shop in, in, in Limpompo and they have refused the management and I'm told the shop is closed by the Minister of uh, Employment and uh, it's closed. So it's one thing that will have. To, but the basic thing here, if people, including workers, they believe that they need it. It must be found and be given, uh, and so that it's 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 their safety if they feel that is safe that way. Uh, the Minister of Health in South Africa, Dr. Zulim Kize, has encouraged that we people use these things. So we'll unless otherwise other other official word come otherwise, we'll encourage that people stick with it including the workers including the, ma the, the including the management that uh, uh, they, they, they they work with those people that they should provide thanks let's start with minister patel on one question that was raised on sanitizers Thank you very much. Uh, Nazir asked the question whether we are taking action where companies, firms, or individuals sell sanitizers and sanitizers that are ineffective, that's very often, as he put it, really just uh, water. So I should, uh, I want to make two points about it. The one is that if anyone sells a uh, hand sanitizer uh, and it is sold in the context of a COVID-19 campaign and it doesn't meet the minimum standards of the alcohol content that the hand sanitizer must have then it is misrepresentation to consumers uh, it would be uh, false advertising it could be false labeling and they can be prosecuted by the uh, National Consumer Council. We have another body in government that sets standards for different consumer products. In the past, there was, there was no need to set 
a standard for hand sanitizers. That body is called the National Regulator of Compulsory Specifications. They now getting together to see how can they fast track a standard for hand sanitizers that meets the requirements of the, uh, the coronavirus. Uh, so I think we will be taking more action to ensure that people don't exploit uh, lack of knowledge by consumers and risk the lives of people in the process. But I want to, to also make the point that while hand sanitizers is very important, uh, as so many health experts and Minister Mkise has said, uh, if you are able to wash your hands with water and soap, when that is available and you can wash it for a minimum period at least 20 seconds some say a little bit more than 20 seconds it's even more effective than hand sanitizer so we use the sanitizer for when we don't have access to water and to soap if i can just briefly comment on the question that john has raised uh, around uh, custom duties and vat obviously what we're dealing with here and the the, uh, the uh, announcement by SARS is to make sure that we have critical stocks of health goods available here in South Africa that if we have to import them because we don't make them locally that they come quickly and we make them available as cheaply as possible. We will constantly be reviewing uh, regulations to ensure that we have the stocks available. In the case of food we're a big food producer and um, the local industry is providing uh, that food. So those are the, uh, the, the questions that came up. Thank you. Thank you, colleague. Minister Lamona. Thank you very much. Uh, I think with the, firstly the the question of the family which is bigger than 50 which has been answered I can just add to state that it is in the interest of the family that it has that number of less than or 50 people because you can't have a family of more than 50 people being exposed to, to the COVID-19. So the leadership of the family must be able to guide to say it is in the interest of all of us that this number is limited at this level so that in case there is any kind of exposure we're able to manage it as a family and see how others can manage so it is also based the families must also help government to ensure that these regulations are enforced the other question that relates to the muslim uh, funerals they said that they, some of them can happen within five hours and there could be no death certificate if you read the regulations you'll see that we have designated senior people either the magistrates or a senior station commissioner so that muslim family can be able to go and present their matter to that station commissioner and the conditions under which uh, muslim funerals do okay and uh, i'm sure the police or that senior magistrate will be able to to help in that regard if uh, there is clear uh, a, a conclusive evidence of the circumstances and how the funeral is going to be conducted within an hour or 30 minutes depending on the religious practices of that but that senior designated person as per the regulation is for that purpose that they must enable the purpose is to ensure that there is social distancing if those are achieved even within this context of the muslim uh, unique kind of a circumstance the senior person will be able to look at it and give guidance to to, to that kind of a family and uh, lastly i would want just to stress the issue that this should not be seen as the relaxation of the rules when we deal with the issue of foreign nationals or foreign south, Af foreign south africans who are stranded in many other countries because when you look at it its implementation will be a once-off kind of implementation it's not going to be an ongoing kind of an implementation it's somebody who people who might be stranded in london or in in, in Brazil or in Mozambique or anywhere who wants to come back to the country. It will not be, we are not going to have the same situation again in two weeks. 
and those foreign nationals who are stranded also here in our country who already have been counted by their embassies it will be a once off that they are going to go back to their own countries the same way we were allowed by by china to go and fetch our 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 citizens in Wuhan. we cannot now again say we have now another group of citizens in Wuhan that we must come and evacuate it was a once off there was a special kind of dispensation that was opened to allow us to fetch the citizens. So this is the kind of regime that we are enabling for, for these regulations to be functional, to be practical, to be responsive to the ongoing challenges that we encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mtim. Colleagues, we have been here from seven minutes past six it's now 23 minutes past eight because we wanted to impart the type of information we needed to impart not uh, for the first time not for the second time but we'll continue to do this so that uh, we keep people of south africa informed under the conditions of the lockdown, what's happening, what's changing, and what are the reasons? What are the reasons for any changes that we might be introducing? Uh, and of course, we all know. Maybe let's repeat this: this disease, this coronavirus, is an enemy to all of us. It's not a government matter but it's a matter for all South Africans. Once again, we would like to appreciate all those that are doing everything in their power to adhere to the regulations that government has put forward for us to fight this disease. We thank you, each and every one of you. Again, our police, by the way, this is not a police matter. This is a societal matter. Uh, this is not a matter of the army. This is a matter of all South Africans wherever we are. As we have said, as the Minister of Health has always said, you get the disease when you go out there and fetch it. But when you stay at home, the likelihood of you contracting this disease is very minimal. We are therefore saying to all South Africans, the president and the government has appealed to all of us to stay at home, except those that need to service us in the medical terrain, in the food security terrain. But in the main, we have been requested that all of us can we just remain at home. That's the only way of fighting this disease so that we do give effect to physical distancing, staying away from crowds, and continuing to wash our hands from time to time so that we don't infect ourselves. Having said that to my colleagues, thank you. And to people in South Africa, thank you for listening to please, what we please, had to say. Please stress that no social gatherings the 50 is for funerals and the shop. Otherwise, no social gatherings, no... No beaches, no, no, no taverns, no... No weddings, no weddings, no prize, nothing. No prize, no shisanyama, no street bash. Uh, and because no again... No after tears, even after no, the funeral. No after tears. Because we are saving lives here. This is a mission to save lives. Mam Sisul. Thank you. I think uh, the message is clear. Wash your hands. But at the same time, remember we're a water-scarce country. Save water. Thank you. Colleagues, we have now reached the end of our press briefing. We will call you again when it is necessary to speak to you. As we are doing, we will keep you informed of all the steps we are taking. But thank you. 
this is ours this is our elephant let's work together to defeat this disease thank you very much good night